spiritual is like a good word now and religion is like a bad word now oh my goodness is that a difference to you if a woman communicates either one. Oh man. I'm talking about a college professor, a mainstream comedian. Y'all know this brother here, right? 26 years of marriage, father and husband? Marcus Wiley, welcome to Harley Initiated. Marriage is a challenge. You actually got into a situation where you just separated with your wife altogether. Yeah, we were separated six months and it was worse when we first got back together. What do you think about the responsibility of presenting or having a follow? Yeah, it's, it's like, I don't know what I was going to say. God damn, I lost my train. I'm 51. <laughs> <laughs> my frustration level with, with his situation was so high. <laughs> I'm just like, the goal is to keep the family together. Wow. That's a good point. That's a great question, and I wish I knew the answer, but, whew, well, first thing I would say is. Welcome to Hardly Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson. Here with another episode of my co-host Ryan Ketchins. I like that intro, bro. I let me say, I feel refreshed, man. So I'm very excited about this episode. Oh my goodness, y'all. Yeah. We've done it again. A OG, 51-year-old brother with a head full of hair and a marriage of 26 years has mm. hit the set. And y'all mm. probably know this brother here, man. A weird combination of a brother. I told him earlier, I'm talking about a college professor a mainstream comedian. Y'all know this brother here, right? 26 years of marriage, father and husband. Oh my goodness. Incredible. Marcus Wiley, welcome to Harley Initiated. What's up? It's go time, man. <laughs> let's dab. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. What's happening? Y'all all right? Man. Feeling blessed, man. Happy to have you. Man, thank y'all for having me. It's been a long time since we've been trying to make this union. Yes. Uh, and collaboration happen here. Yes. And welcome to the platform. Yes. Am I, am I about to get initiated? I mean, you I'm, about to help, all, help initiate us as well as the, the, the hundred thousand people that subscribe. Yeah, I, you, yeah, you're doing the initiation. Well, let's get it. I'm this ready. show here. I mean, when a brother has been married for 26 years, mm. you 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 learn some things. Yeah, and uh, you got an interesting background too, man. As mm. uh, you, not only were you preacher's kid, right? Preacher's kid, grandkid, and great grandkid. Wow. Yeah. So it's legacy. Well, I broke the generational curse, so uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> the legacy is done. Uh, I told my son, you're welcome. Uh, wow. Yeah, he ain't got to deal with it, but yeah, I've been in church all my life. Why, why you say that though? Why, why is it a generational curse? Uh, well, that's jokingly, but you know, I never wanted to be a pastor. You know, just growing up, um, seeing my dad do it and all that, my grandfather, I was like, yeah, I don't. I don't want to take over the church. I'm not going into the family business. Yeah. But some say I'm in it. I'm just doing it in a different way. I can uh -huh. see that. Yeah. yeah. Well, so wait, was there pressure for you to become, to I guess, to to take on the helm of the family business? Oh, and most definitely. When my dad died in 09, man, his dying wish was that I took over the church. Wow. Yeah. God blocked it. Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> didn't do it. But, but um, you know, just... You know, I think all pastors, they want their kid or their son to kind of, um, you know, take over. And I thought about it because that's a good check. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's a yeah. good check. But uh, I knew it wasn't for me. So you you passed up the actual, you know, pastorship and taking on that role. Mm -hmm. But you kept, you know, the actual. What I learned. What you learned. Yeah. yeah. And would yeah. you consider yourself a Christian brother today? Oh, I'm a Christian. All okay. day, every day. Okay. Yeah. I'm a Christian. So you took that on with you? Yeah, my Christian values and beliefs and all that type of stuff, yeah. Well, so we we hear a lot of you know people having issues and challenges with the church coming mm -hmm. up, and sure. then now it's this uh, level of separation mm -hmm. and even anxiety that comes with you know potentially getting back involved with the church or Christianity. Yeah. So how was you able, you know, amongst the family pressure, mm -hmm. right, to, mm -hmm. to take on a pastorship, mm -hmm. how were you able to still maintain a healthy relationship with the church and your religion? Man, I owe church everything, first of all. Man, church was good to me, you know. I'm a fan of church. Uh, people in church, they helped me. Man, I remember when I got married, people in church bought the hotel for me and my wife that night, bought the limousine. Everybody from my church pulled together to help it where I have to spend a whole bunch of money. Mm. My first apartment, a lady at the church gave me her old furniture. A lady, had, another lady took me to get my license. We you, I use her vehicle, so I'm a fan of the church. Wow, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. cause I understand it's community. 
And uh, when people who have a problem with the church, I don't even I don't even understand what that means because, you know, it's where the community come together, you know, to try to help your life be a little bit more better, a little more smoother. Well, you know, I mean, every church ain't the same, so that's the thing. You had that experience. Some people having a very different experience. Like what though? In church, like what? Like the church being messy and the church, mm-hmm. you know, having situations where they where they bad talking that person mm-hmm. and because i mean at the end of the day the, the church is just a reflection of the people in it okay and see you have some for, for the people that's p- pulling in and supporting you mm-hmm. them some great people yeah but we had mess at the church mm. you, you know what i'm saying like I, I don't think i don't think it's devoid of mess and, and all the other negativity that you probably said because when you have humans flawed people imperfect people yeah. coming together you're gonna have some of that but i just choose not to laser in on that because it was some other good stuff that was happening at the church that yeah. i'd rather speak on and talk about i'm on the same page with you about that because anytime you have a community is going to be politics involved it's yes. going to be favoritism nepotism yeah. all of those things involved but you know we did a poll, I think mm-hmm. it was like last week, a couple of weeks ago, where yeah. we actually polled some of the community mm-hmm. and we asked them, do you identify with being spiritual, yeah. religious, mm-hmm. or other? Yeah, yeah, and, and non religious or something like that. Yeah, yeah atheist yeah. Or, or something like that. For sure. And I think it was like close to 60% of people identify as spiritual. Yeah. So in general, like, what's your perspective? Because I'm sure you probably get that a lot at your shows. No you know, doubt. people just identify as spiritual. No doubt. In general, what does that mean to you? Or like, what might that indicate? Yeah, spiritual is like a good word now. And religion is like a bad word now. Religion kind of like identify being cultish. Yeah. A <laughs> gang, a gang or something like Judgy. that. Judgy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's, that, that's so religion now is like a bad word. You know, we're in the dispensation in a time now where you know, people change words just like this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I said the word female the other day, and the girl was like, female? And I was like, yeah. She was like, no, we don't use that. And I'm going, that word. <laughs> it was a fe- like, she was like, yeah, men normally use the word female when they want to use the B word. And I was like, not me, though. Wow. Like, I grew up watching on application, male, female. I hear the people at the police, is it a male or female suspect? I mean, I never knew. <laughs> It was a bad word. But back to what you was really saying. So religion is a bad word. Spiritual, it's a good word. Okay? I'm spiritual, but I also have religion. I do. I mean, I'm a religious person. You know, religion is just attached to beliefs. There's a set of beliefs that I believe that my religion promotes or whatnot. Mm. And that's it. But, but, but most definitely, I'm spiritual. Now, a lot of people use the spiritual component so they don't have to go to a religious institution. Mm -hmm. It's easier to say I'm religious and I don't need to go over to no church or no mosque or no masjid or whatever. I could have my relationship with, with God. But, you know, to debunk that particular theory, I'm just saying I look at it like being on a team. And if you're on a team, how how are you on the team if you don't practice with the team? If you don't play with the team, if you don't hang out with the team, you're not on the team. So people could say they're spiritual all day, but I think if you're being honest, you got to attach yourself to some religious sector. Mm. You have to. Mm-hmm. If you're on the team, if you're on team God, God has a building that the players go to. If you're mm. on the team. If you're, I- on, if you're on the team. I'm just saying, if yeah. you're on the team, if you're on God right. team, you know, it's people who are spiritual. I'm with God. But if you're on God's team, he has places where the players go play. So, so when it comes to, because that's, that's an interesting concept when you go to belief system. And I, lo- I love this conversation, by the way. It's one of my favorites because I think okay. it's like a very core conversation mm-hmm. that affects just about every other area of our lives, especially <laughs> relationships. Okay. Oh, yeah. Come very on. relevant. Oh, my Come goodness. On. Was it important to you that your wife not necessarily just identified as spiritual, but she was able to say, I'm religious? No doubt, no doubt. Is uh-huh. that a difference? Like, is that a difference to you if a woman communicates either one? I think it is a difference. Like I, like I just stated, like, you know, we gotta get out of the mindset that religious is something bad. See, I think if you already have in your 
in your mind that, oh, he religious, she religious, and now you got the ex to them, well, it's going to be hard for you. But, you know, I just look at being religious, like I say, that's just attached to beliefs. Yeah. And that's it. And so when I met my wife, definitely, she was a Christian. Um, my wife's from Dallas. I'm from Houston. And so, you know, that was a set of beliefs that she already believed in. You know, they were in sync with my beliefs. And so, you know, boom, we've been together since. Okay. Did that just make things easier when, when it comes to challenges that you have in your relationship? Or did, was it just more comfortable that you, you know, that you, uh, she recognized that it was a set of beliefs that she had where you didn't have to kind of worry about her changing up on you? Like, yeah. I ain't gonna say it makes stuff easier, but it helps. Okay. I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, marriage, marriage is, is, is a challenge. So I'm never gonna just say just having, just because we both believe in God, we both you know, have some of the same religious beliefs that, 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 you know, made it easier. But it does help because at some point when the emotions, you know, simmer down, mm. we can now go back to our beliefs and kind of, you know, forgive, you know, because that's one of the things about being religious. You know, they want you to forgive those who spitefully use you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And see, that's a that's a good point because I remember watching one of your previous interviews. Mm -hmm. You actually got into a situation where you just separated with your wife altogether. Yeah, we were separated six months. Wow. So first of all, what what caused that separation in the first place? Oh man, Jess, I didn't like marriage no more. Uh, watch this. This might help. Marriage, I thought it wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. So we was brought at the four year mark, and um. You know, and now it's crazy because when I hear youngsters say, man, marriage ain't what I thought it was going to be, now I know the answer. Mm. It's not that marriage is not what you thought it was going to be. You not what you thought you was going to be. And so what happens is we'll project all the things we're not on marriage. Because if you go to your high school yearbook, do you remember what you wrote in yours? No. What, 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 what you was going to be? What were you going to be, Ryan? Do y'all remember? Oh, what I, was gonna, yeah, I was going to be a sports medicine doctor. Sports medicine wow. doctor. I don't even remember. You don't even remember, <laughs> right? And so, and so I'm just saying, so we got married young. And so being broke and all that, life wasn't going the way I wanted to go. You know, the way I thought it would go. And so now I'm taking mm. all of what I'm not out on her. And, you know, and, and vice versa. You know, and so, um, yeah. So in that period, though, we separated. Y'all separated. Yeah, and that's the interesting thing. Well, I want—I do want to get context. So separate okay. as in not living in the same. Not place. living in the same building. Okay. She wow. had her apartment. I had my apartment for six months, and then it wasn't until um, you know I talk about this in my new show, um, "Marriage Is Major Surgery." I'm on tour now. Shameless plug. However, <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> But what, um, what happened was I'm trying to get divorced, okay? And um, during the time of separation, my comedy started taking off. Now, mind you, I've been telling her for four years, stick with me. We're going somewhere. Trust me. This year four when the separation Year four up. separation, but I've been telling her, stick with me. I know it's rough now. I know we're not eating where you would like to eat. And mm. we're not living where you would like to live. And you're not driving what you would like to drive, but stick with me, trust me. And so year four, we get separated. Mm. Now my comedy start taking off in mm. year four, right? Like right when we start, right, right when we separated. And uh, I got this big opportunity to perform on BET as one of the top five clean comics. And I knew that was gonna blow me up because on BET they put your, you know, they put your little, um, your, your, uh, your website back in the day on there. <laughs> and you know, BET, they keep looping shows. So churches was booking me, people was booking me all across the country. And uh, I did this final show and then, you know, because I'm religious and spiritual, you know, I was flying home from Miami and then, man, God just kind of spoke, kind of appeared to me. And basically, you know, said, you know, man, you about to divorce this girl because she do a few things you don't like. But I haven't divorced you, and you do a plethora of things I don't like. And, man, it just, I kind of like heard it just clear as day. You know what I mean? It, like, I don't want to be spooky, 
But uh, it, wow. was, it was just real clear, you yeah. know, because I I didn't want to be a dude to get on, and now I don't have the one who was with me when I wasn't on. Mm. I ain't never want to be that dude. And don't get me wrong, I know things happen. Yeah. But I'm just saying, I don't. I just, just never wanted to be that guy. And so I knew it was about to take off, and she been down with me. She held me down these whole five years. You know, that was my thing to her, hold me down for five years while I kind of find myself. And she did it. And so now since she held me down for five, I hold her down for life. Mm. Mm. What does recon uh, reconciliation look like when you have decided to separate from your wife and now you're ready to get back with her? Ooh, it, 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 it got worse when we got back, right? It was, even though, even though the good Lord appeared to me and told me, get kind of go, go back home, it was worse when we, went, when, I, when we first got back together. Worse, because marriage is surgery, man. It's work. Mm. And those who don't have any stick to those who don't want to put in that work, that time, I would say don't do it. Don't do it. And so we battled through it. You know, we battled through it. And, uh, you know, by the grace of God, things got better. And I knew things were – I knew we had kind of uh, grew in leaps and bounds when we got hit with the pandemic. Cause I don't know if y'all, I know y'all do a lot of research. A lot of marriages didn't make it. Oh pandemic. yeah. Yeah. A lot of them. And I probably, we probably wouldn't have made it had it hit 10 years and under. Mm. But because it hit, I think we were about maybe at 22 years. I was more patient. I was more compassionate. I was more, you know, understanding. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that didn't, that wasn't, that didn't come in the early years. That came over the years. Mm. You feel me? So, so a year, when the pandemic hit, you was what year? I think we were like 22 years when it hit. Okay, so. I think <laughs> we were in 22 years is what I'm saying. We had been married. So, so I was able to make it because, you know, we didn't put a bunch of time in. But I'm saying had it hit under 10 years. Well, things would have been a lot different. I would have thought she was the reason for COVID. I'm just saying that's just <laughs> that's how it would have been. You the reason why everybody out there getting sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. that's the that's the thing though, because it's very easy to point the finger when you in a situation when you pissed off at, at your yourself woman. first. Now see, that's what I was gonna talk about, right? <laughs> yeah. How do you know when it's the point when it's time to take accountability mm -hmm. and when it's really time to point the finger? Mm. That's a that's a great question, and I wish I, I wish I knew the answer. But I think when you man up, you know you gonna always first do you know a self evaluation. You know it's always some things, um, probably that I could do better, that would probably help her to do better. Mm. You know, women are are kind of the. Um, I don't want to use the term weaker vessel, but they're a little bit more emotional, you know, than men mm. and stuff like that. And sometimes men will say, oh, she crazy, without saying, we drove her, we drove her, drove her crazy, mm. you know, by maybe some of the things we've said or some of our actions. So what I try to do is, you know, do a self-reflection, kind of see what am I doing first you know, um, that can maybe help, you know, ease some of that, you know, what she dealing with. So if the, if think about this, if, if your beliefs, mm -hmm. I mean, you guys having the same backgrounds, same background, still put you in a position to be separated. Yes. So obviously that is not the cure mm -hmm. to all problems being solved. Not at all. It's just foundation. Oh, it's, it's foundation. Just, it's just, yes, yes. I think that's what it is. It's it's foundation. I'm not saying that just because, you know, both of y'all in church and both of y'all believe the same thing, that everything is good. No, but it is a great foundation, just my perspective. It's a great foundation to have because what well, we can always, when she believes this or or when she think this and I think this, we can always go back to the to the foundation. So that's what I want to know, too, because I think a lot of us are struggling, too, now. A, we absolutely struggling on the commitment side, being able to weather things. But on the front end, I think we're also very confused about what we should be looking for. Okay. And what we should be vetting for in this person. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of confusion around that. Yeah. 
And I hear also some people say you absolutely should not go outside of your spirituality or your religion. And I hear other people say, you know, different. Mm -hmm. So just in general, mm -hmm. what's some, what's those very important things mm -hmm. on the front end mm -hmm. to make it as easy as it possibly could be? Yeah. It's going to be problems, but as easy as yeah. you could be on the back end, yeah. what do we need to be looking for to be make it a year 26? Whew. Well, first thing uh, I would say is you have to have the ability to forgive. If you're somebody who can't forgive people, this probably ain't the game you want to get in with mm -hmm. marriage because – you know, mistakes are being made every day, every other day. Once, we, you know, however, you know, you have to be able to forgive. And, and when people, when I say that, people always think you're talking about forgiving because somebody else entered the picture. No, I'm just talking about forgiving stuff that's been said, stuff that's been done, stuff that you thought should have went that way and they did it that way. And, and actually it wasn't a problem. You was wrong for even thinking they was going to do it the way you would have done it, mm -hmm. you know. For me though, I think at the end of the day, none of that really, really matters. Like, let me tell you when I knew my wife was the one. This is when I knew she was the one. Uh, I was in grad school, I'm being honored. And uh, I come to her, I said, hey babe, I need you to ride with me tonight. I'm being honored at this gala. She was like, oh, I'm not going. I was like, no, I need you with me. She was like, I ain't going. I said, why? She said, well, I ain't got my hair done. I ain't got my nails done. You know, I ain't got nothing to wear. Man, I had $100. Took it out of my wallet. I said, here, man, I need you with me. Make it work. I leave. I, had, I was working at Chase Bank. I come back. Boom, she meet me at the house. She put $60 in my hand. I said, hey, you ain't using much? She said, yeah, I did. She said, I went to the, to the little um, beauty supply, got me a little box perm. All right, so she can pat them edges, you know, <laughs> get that together. Back in the day, girls know how to do their own nails. They had this thing back in the days before y'all time called Lee Press-Ons. They, they know how to do their own nails. They didn't have to go spend a buck 20, you know, at the <laughs> nail shop. They, wow. they know how to do their own. Yeah. She went and did that. And then there was this store that women would get these shoes from called Baker's. It was a shoe store, very inexpensive. They were some nice shoes, but you only could wear them about three times. <laughs> you know, after about that fourth time, they started unraveling. You right. know, the stitching started coming out. But I looked at that. I was like, wow, <laughs> I put 100 in her hand. She gave me 60 back. This is somebody who I felt like at this particular time in life wasn't just thinking about, oh, this is my 100. Mm. She knew I gave her, this my, this all I have. So instead of her eating up that whole 100, she brought me 60 back. I mean, she brought me, uh, yeah, she gave me 60 back. Now, that's the right girl for me, okay? Might not be the perfect girl, but she the right one for me. Mm. Now, she ain't brought me change back since. Let's be clear. <laughs> I ain't got no change back. <laughs> that's how she got in. But, you know, I just knew then, you know, that that was, um, you know, that she was the one. Yeah. Off of that. And so I use that story because... I don't know, we be looking for some big epiphany or some big sign. I need the rainbow to be over her head or I need the sun just to shine just on her. Nah, it just be little things like that that let me know, you know, she down with me, you know, for life. Yeah. And so far, so good. But in that is so much. Like, you know, in that you see thoughtfulness. Yeah, You sure. see consideration. Selflessness. Yeah. You see sacrifice. Yes. You know, you see all of these characters and qualities yes. that really show character. Yeah which is what you really need to be looking for over the span yeah, of this right, long haul. That's right. probably the greatest predictor yeah. <laughs> of who this person is going to be. Who this person going to be. If they showing that they got some good character. That they got some good character. So, you know, I, I get it. And she down with me. I tell everybody, my wife is into me. And see, that's major. Like, you know, it, she into me. When we got married, I say, hey, I need five years to find myself. Trust me, we're going to do this. We're going to make it, all this. But I need you to let me do me. I had dreams for, for, before I had you. Let me chase them. Yeah. No problem. Did that. She into me. If my wife is at a restaurant, let's say Papa Do's, she'll call. Hey, I'm at Papa Do's. You want something to eat? Mm. I say, yeah. All right, bye. I love that. I ain't got to tell her what I want. 
she already know what I eat and oh, yeah. man, I'm you yeah. know what I mean? She into me. And so it's hard to kind of answer that question because everybody don't need that. You know, some other another brother might not need that from his lady. I need that from my lady. And yeah. so that's why, you know, she was the right one for me. Yeah. So when you on tour and mm -hmm. you sharing this type of insight with your audience and you got mostly female audiences coming to the shows, right? For sure. Do they give you any kind of insight and, or feedback that suggests that they also are, I guess, interested in being that type of woman? Not really. You know what most of them want to do? I, I want to meet your wife. Mm. I want to hear what she got to say. I'd be like, well, book her. Wow. I mean, you know, they book me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you, if you want to. You know, it's like, it's almost like, nah, people don't even believe. Or, well, we don't see it on social media. Yeah, that's because, as I was sharing with you, our marriage is a bond and not a brand. Mm. You know, when your marriage is a brand, you making money off your marriage. I'm not looking to make money off, off my marriage. My marriage is, 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 is a bond, it's not a brand. And so that's why when these couples, you'll see Hollywood couples or whatever, book tours and all this, they, you know, podcast together, you know, they making money off the brand that they call a marriage. Mm -hmm. And then when it goes bad, respect our privacy. <laughs> That's true. Well, brands are not private. Okay. They're exclusive. You got some exclusive brands, but no brands are private. And so people are not being disrespectful because they want to know what happened. We bought your book. Mm. You was encouraging us. You was telling us how to live. I mean, how, how, how to how to be together. You know, you wrote in the book, here go the six steps to marriage. And now y'all call it quits and you, hey, respect our privacy. No, mm. sir. Right. No, sir. <laughs> we need to know. <laughs> I got the book. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, yeah, you know, so, well, yeah, we're not trying to be a brand. So when the ladies at the comedy show always want to know something, I say, hey, man, that lady, my wife, like being Kind of, I don't want to say in the background, because she's not in the background. People, they know her. I mean, she on social media, you know, she ain't in nobody's background, but she's just not interested in making the marriage, you know, a brand. I could see that being a, you know, disbelief. I could see people being in disbelief if you sharing that, you know, yeah. kind of situation with them. Just yeah. because it's not really what's put in front of us on a daily basis. Sure. I mean, minute to minute, we're looking at most of the information that we're looking at is, is rather divisive. Yes. And um, it doesn't promote healthy relationships. So when you mm -hmm. get somebody on stage talking about they've been married 26 years yeah. and how good it's going and how you know yeah. you knew she was the one. Yeah. You know, I can see yeah. it. Prove it. Yeah. I can prove see it. it. I can we prove need to it. see it. And that's crazy. Yeah. And, and it'll never get proven. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, because we still trying to prove it to each other. Yeah. Even after 26 years. You understand know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'm it's I got I just need one person's approval and not the, you know, the approval from from the masses. I'm gonna show you how cold, man, my wife, I think I, I, I may have said this a time or two. They was doing this show called Young Fly and Saved. It's back in the day. This when I'm on your London's morning show, um, National Syndicated Radio Show, whatever, and and they was getting all these fly gospel artists, you know, Ken Jones and James Fortune, Isaac Curry, blah, 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 Dietrich Hatton. And they wanted me. So we went through all these, this one went on uh, Skype was the thing. Wow. All these Skype interviews we had to go through and, and they was trying to find out what are some of the problems that y'all have had in marriage? This is what, this is what the, the people who was doing the show wanted, the producers. Yeah, we need to know some, like what's some of the, basically what's, the, what's some dirt? Give us some dirt yeah, about y'all. Some, some tea. Some tea. Yeah, that's what y'all say, some tea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me and my wife, you know, we're united front. <laughs> now, we've been separated. Still ain't never, we one, one, one didn't tell them. You see what I'm saying? We, we're united front. I'm not about to give you, what is this? Why do you want to know so bad, the bad of a relationship? Just know, oh, it's been some bad. Mm. It's been more good though. I mean, you know, we still together. But my wife, she came to me, she says, we got off that Skype. She said, man, do you really want to do this? 
And I said, you know, I'm just doing it, trying to promote the comedy brand, trying to move myself forward. And my wife said, can your life handle being on TV? <laughs> I said, can my life handle? Yeah, can your life handle cameras following you around? I said, you show sure right. Mm. We ain't doing it. Mm. And that's, I'm talking about that's somebody looking out. She looking out for me. For real. Yeah. And looking out for her too. I mean, you know, her sanity, her peace. Yeah. I want no camera following me. Yeah, and I know that's the way of the word. Don't get me wrong. So some people, they're able to do it for whatever reasons, whether it's to, you know, move their agenda forward, you know, promote their brand, mm -hmm. you know, money, whatever. I'm not doing it. And she down with it. Even on a smaller scale, I think that's a really good question that people can ask themselves because it may not be a you know nationally syndicated show. Mm -hmm. It just may be you and your camera. Yeah. Can, 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 <laughs> can your life handle you and your camera putting all your business out like that? Come on. And it's a lot of people that's actually failing at life because they open and open themselves up to that. With two thousand followers. With two thousand followers, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and they Damn. having they they having panic attacks, we'll talk about anxiety yeah. attacks and, yeah. and being triggered all over the place. Yeah. yeah. And it's they they it's actually their camera. It's their camera. Yeah. It's a lot, man. Yeah. It's a lot. Well, where'd you find your wife, by the way? Uh campus of Texas Southern University. Okay. Walking by. Okay, so it well, okay. Because I I thought it was gonna have something to do with church. No, man, I'm not just in church every day. <laughs> I have a life but, but see, outside of church. See the reason the church reason is I, a part of it, but I have a life. Reason I asked that question too, because <laughs> the ladies are confused too. The ladies are confused at where to find brothers because they communicate too that it's not brothers enough brothers in church yeah. as well. That's another right. thing. It's not. Why is that, by the way? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a, a few. It's a, it's, and I, I want to hear yours because you you no, got generations of this joint. It's here. a few reasons why men are not in church. Okay, you know, one of them is you know when you go to church, you become vulnerable, and men sometimes have a problem being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You know, you go in there, you see, you know, men the very submissive you know, hands raised and men crying. And, you know, some guys are not ready to open up like that. You know, we still hard with it, you know. Uh, still hard. I remember one time uh, I was at T.D. Jake's man, man's conference, right? Yeah. He had this thing, manpower or something. And uh, we were there, me and the co-host, a uh, dude named Larry Jones, we were there. Yolanda sent us, gifted us to go. And it's like 10,000 men. Wow. So I'm in here, right? And I'm going, yeah, all these brothers in here, you know. T.D. Jakes get to doing this thing, right? Man, brothers in here just crying. I'm in here like, nah, I ain't, I ain't, ain't going to do it. But as he kept going, I mean, you know, T.D. Jakes cold with it, man. He kept <laughs> he kept hitting me. And they say, no, I'm out, oh, man. I'm in here. I'm Shirt wet, face wet, everything, <laughs> you know. But I tried to fight it. It's, it's, it's all men in here. Right. Yeah. You know, um, and so that's one reason, you know, being uh, vulnerable. And another thing is men look at it as a hustle. You know, this 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 pastor got a good hustle going right now. Mm. Yeah. You know, some men think he's something like a pimp. Mm. Look at all these guys in here. I mean, you know what I'm saying? And they all said, pastor, yeah. We love you, pal. And you know, they 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 team pastor. And some men look at that like, oh, you know, mm, I ain't really with all that. You know, so and then lastly, another one is men want to get they they feel like they gotta get themselves all the way together before they go. You know, they wanna make sure they going for the right reasons or they in a good place in life. They they don't, you know. They don't want to be there and still doing what they had been doing. You know, that's I think that third one is a is a, a big one. Yeah. Because um, because then you have to admit fault. You have to admit fault. You you got to come clean. Yeah. Cause and it's, hard. It's, it's very difficult to continue mm -hmm. doing all of the wild stuff wild you was stuff. doing, mm -hmm. and then be rolling up in the church on Sunday. For sure. So yeah, I, I can I can definitely uh, resonate with that. Number sure. two as well, yeah. because a lot of a lot of guys. 
they can be very cynical about the leadership mm-hmm. of the church in general. Yeah. Like, man, that man ain't doing this. Like, he ain't yeah. even living right. Like, yeah. like who knows his wife? His wife, yeah. his wife don't even look happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. they, they tend to question. All that. Whereas, if you notice, if a man and a woman both walk into church together, they could become a couple. Mm-hmm. The woman, after one good service, ready to make it a church home. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. she's like, oh, my God, this was amazing. This yeah. is great. Yeah. And the guy, he just questioned everything. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really know. He, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nah, 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 yeah, I don't, I don't, trust I don't like, know. Look at that, that watch, way too bright. Yeah, yeah. He flashy yeah. as hell. Yeah. yeah. Nah, was that his Rolls Royce? Yeah. Like <laughs> oh, hell no. Nah. Like, All that whatever. type of stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just so men, you know, men, they're, we're, we're, we're more logical, um, you know, and so we're going to. We ain't gonna look at all that. Which is why it's even harder for us to even get men to, it, like it. It takes about four, five, six, seven shows to win a man over. Yeah. yeah. Whereas the ladies, they see one great show. Yeah. They gonna want to come yeah. in and support. Yeah, there's some good content. I like right. them. They talked about some stuff. Boom. Dudes, it's always. Hmm, what's the angle? <laughs> what's the know. angle? Where they coming from? You know? Yeah. So do you think that? Church is a really uh, even a good place for women to prospect for men at that point. Uh, probably not, um, because it's similar to college. You know, when I was in college, I don't know how it is now, but when I was in college at Texas Southern University, it was sixteen females, every one male. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it was like that. So yeah, so the the getting was good for us. Yeah, and that's how it is in church too. I mean, it's. Just the probability that just yeah. don't, it's yeah. not favorable. So that's why, like, women, you know, trying to find a good church guy. <sighs> yeah. That's tough. Probably a little tough because probably the good church guys are married. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm just saying because they probably in there and they probably married. And not saying that there, that there are no good single church guys, but they are far and few between. So that's why churches encourage women to live. You know, you single. I I mean, don't worry about a good church man. Just worry about a good man. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You might find a good man in Miami. Uh, you know, mm. a good dude in Dallas. You know, a good guy in Georgia. I mean, you know, just get out the church part. But see, now that's tricky because now if – is going back to that belief part, that foundation part, mm-hmm. right? Because if a man doesn't have the same beliefs as you, mm-hmm. what's still, how do I know he's still a good man mm-hmm. that I should really consider if mm-hmm. he's not saying Jesus Christ mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's who I'm praying to? Mm-hmm. How do I, what, what can I look at to say that this might still be a man that mm-hmm. I can build with long term? Yeah, so you basically saying, you meet a guy, but he's he's not a believer, mm, right? Right, he's not a believer, but he's a man. But he's a man, good man. So you have some. I mean, you know, there's people with some with some good morals. You can be a non-believer, but have good morals. You understand know what I'm saying? Right. You was raised what we consider being raised right as relates to respect right. women, treat women right, hard working. You're mm-hmm. not lazy. Right. You see what I'm saying? At least that's a starting pl- that's a starting point. Becoming a believer ain't as hard. <laughs> it's not as hard as some of these things that we learned growing up. Mm, that's becoming a great be- point. Becoming that a is. believer is just one day you just you know what? Wow. I believe. I'm ready. Walk right. to the front. Right. Walk to yeah. the front. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. You're right. So you got a bunch of people who 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 are believer, but terrible at treating women not with, with respect. Terrible. They lazy, don't want to work, but they believe us. Mm. You see what I'm saying? That's a great point. So, yeah, so I don't I I don't think anything wrong with that. We just have to learn how to be a little bit more, you know, I, I think patient, you know, with that. You know, I grew up in church, so I knew a lot of women at my dad's church who men didn't come to church. Their husbands, rather, didn't come to church. Wow. They didn't come to church. Now, when we had a church picnic, they out there. They got a cool under a tree over there, you know, because they got they they got a different type of drink. It's some liquor in there. Yeah, they some liquor, and they cool. They want to. They want the church cooler just just got orange sprite, right. coke, you know, water, yeah, yeah, all that. They over there. They would come to that. They would come, come out, watch you come to the church barbecue. If we had something at the church, 
like a family or, or anniversary or something, they'll come help out, but never really just came in, never really came in church. Yeah. What those ladies never did was bother them about, you need to be on the inside. They just kept letting them do what they was doing. You feel me? Mm. Be patient. Let them, I mean, hey, he coming, he understand, hey, let me come help the church out. Let me, they come up there, work on my daddy's car. Won't even, he a mechanic. One of them was a mechanic. Won't even come in the church, but he'll come up there, do rev, car, everything. My dad talked to him. They might go to lunch the whole night. Hey, man, everybody ain't just going to come when you want them or, you know, let them come at their own time. Type of thing. You got to have some patience. You know, the same way God patient with us. Mm. You know, you just got to have some patience sometimes, you know? Honestly, that's a message. Yeah. Like, like look for the good in somebody first. Yeah. But not necessarily always the God in them first, the good in them first. And that the God could come on the back end. It could come over time. These different things. Because and, and vice versa too now. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying the other things can't come as well. But I'm just saying the initial question was for the women in church. Yeah. Yeah. Because they looking for a godly man. And but, but that's what they mean when they say a godly man. They mean a man that's <laughs> industrious and ambitious. A yeah. man that is principally founded. Okay. A man that's going to, you know, respect them the right way. A man that's going to want to yeah. build and, you know, provide a level of uh, instruction and yeah. direction for the family. Yeah. So I, But I a lot of them do can... mean the one that's praying to their same God as well. Like, if we be very clear, because we, I think we even... Like if you look if you look in comments and them chats, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a lot of women won't even consider a man mm -hmm. if he's not doing those things. Yeah, and then you gotta look because some men see. I grew up in church; it's different. I was born born in it. I I met it wasn't until I got to college where I started meeting guys never been to church, and I'm like, wow, never been to church. Yeah. Yeah, my family didn't go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it wasn't until yeah, yeah. I got to college, I'm 18 now or whatever, 19, and I'm meeting people who haven't been to a place that I was there three, four times a week. <laughs> you, you feel what I'm coming from? Yeah. I get exactly what and you so mean. now these guys are my sweet mates, or my roommates and everything, and now I have to model for them, you know, what a church boy look like. Mm -hmm. you, you feel what I'm saying? And so, and, and that wasn't, that wasn't, I'm in here with a Bible. No, 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 no. They smoking weed. I'm right here. Mark, you want it? No. Well, pass it over there to Ryan. Well, here you go, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. because right. you don't run from it. Yeah. You, you feel me? You, you, I can't run. I'll be running. I'm in college, bro. I'll be yeah. running. I, every in circles. Room, every room <laughs> yeah, I go yeah, to, I'm going to yeah. be running. I just got to stand. And then what happens is after you make that stand and they know who you are and then they love you for who you are, it's good. They not even, they not even giving it to you. You know, I do a joke about how they, yeah. they would smoke weed, smoke weed. I'd be in there passing everything. And one day I said, you know what, I'm smoking because I ain't never smoked weed. The reason why I never smoked weed was because, one, I know people think they know they weed man, but do you? Right. And, and you know, like, where he get the weed from? My man, fact, you know, fact. I'm just saying, I know my weed, man. I bet, I bet. Other reason, because everybody had to put their lips on it. You know, mm -hmm. that was a problem for me. Like, I'm an only child. Is it a private weed I can have? Is it <laughs> going to have my own one? I mean, <laughs> I know y'all into this puff, puff fast, but can I just puff, puff, keep? Type of type. <laughs> and so, but here it is. The day I was about to smoke it, man, my roommate, he's like, Got mad, man. What you doing? Why you trying to do what we do, man? Don't be doing us. Do you? You know he was just, and I was like, mm, and it let me know right then. Even though I'm in church, saved, and all is here, the people who are not still want you around them. They still need you to be around them. You feel mm. me? You was having an impact on them. Cause you having an impact on them. Yep. Even if they still doing whatever they doing, they still need you there. Like, so what you going to forsake them? You going to abandon them because you don't because you don't do it? Yep. They not good people. Man, some of my closest partners, people who I would call before I call somebody at my church. You feel me? 
Yeah. So it's just one of them things where, you know, uh, start somewhere, man. If they're a good person, start there. Those guys, they wanted you to be around for that one day that they decide to put it down. To put it down. They're they they going to look right at you and they're like, yeah. yo, how you do it? And then they need to the witness, like, oh, this boy here now. This boy here don't smoke. He, he don't drink. Oh, he be with us. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So I was, I was telling Ryan, I, I was the designated driver when I was in college. That was my thing. Yeah. I'm the designated driver. I don't even have, watch this, I don't even have a car. <laughs> I don't have a car. I'm using, I'm driving some, one of the, one of the, the liquored up high cats cars, but they see something in me. Watch this here. They see something in me where they'll put their lives in my hand. Mm -hmm. They trust me to get them from A to B when they in the back. Yep. <laughs> Throwing up. Mark got us. Wow. I mean, we're at the party. Fight. They about to fight. I'm like, hey, come on, let's go. Man, we gone. I would go to Deuce. Hey, man, apology. My friend's stupid. We don't want to fight, bro. There's too many gals in here. You see it. Don't worry about us. We're going to get out of here. I pull these boys out. Let's go. Because that's, you know, that's, that was, that's the role. And you was a valuable friend. Valuable. You was a valuable friend. Man. Valuable. And so, you know, so that's what I mean when I'm saying, as it relates to the girl, to kind of be patient. I'm patient with these guys. These some good guys. Yeah. Just because yeah. they get liquored up and high and fight from time to time don't mean that they just some horrible cats. They yeah. make some bad decisions like everybody else. Like everybody else. Now you talking about doing you, mm -hmm. right? So you put out clean comedy. Yes. So, you, of course, you've shared stages with people who have less clean comedy, yes. right? And then you a content creator, so you see kind of the messaging that people are putting out. Uh, what do you think about the responsibility of presenting or having a following? Like, could you describe how important that is to you and why you decided to put out the type of message that you do? So, even though I didn't want to be a pastor, I knew that my dad, my grandfather, my great grandfather was doing good work in the community. You know, I knew the family brand and I didn't want to get on stage and just be, you know, just cussing and whatnot. Although I know how to do it mm. and I know I would be great at it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. But I just made the decision, I'm going to do it clean. You know, um, and so that's it. I just wanted to um, kind of, you know, I just didn't want to go against what my people was was trying to do, you know, and that's really the only reason. Because if my daddy would have been a plumber and my grandfather would have been a post postal worker, I'd be cussing mm. up a storm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but I'm glad it, it worked out the way it did because, um, you know, I think um, people need to see, they need to see a just as funny cat do it, and it's, and it gives you a, you know, an option that you can see like, oh, would this dude do it? You know, because when I'm in the clubs, if I'm at the clubs, you know, I'm going right behind cats who, who've been talking under women dresses and, you know, cussing, vulgar, and all that. And don't get me wrong, I ain't tripping with them, right? Because I like that, I like that comedy, I like that comedy. <laughs> and so I'm not tripping, but I think you people need to see, you know, what's the other option. Speaking of seeing, you know, like positive examples of, um, you know, these different parts of life. How important would you say it is as a man, a married man, mm -hmm. that you surround yourself with other married men? And, and what's the what's the effect on your life? How does that affect your life? Yeah, you got to do it because we vent to each other. You know, what will happen is, so I walk with about three married cats every morning. That's how we exercise. And, oh, wow. Yeah, and so they're, man, man, my wife, man, she gonna, let me tell you what she gonna do it. Do, 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 do. And so, you know, you gotta look at them like, <laughs> you know, like, bro, so you mad? Well, you need to be mad at yourself. You know, I mean, you know, you need somebody to check you. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm not for, uh, 
I'm not on your team. I'm your boy, but I'm not on your team. I'm on the team of right. Okay, I'm not on the team of just you, my partner. So by me being on team right, I'm going to tell you, you know, the God's honest truth. And I'm going to tell you when you tripping. So maybe about at the top of this year, one of my friends, a friend of mine, a guy I know, he told me, man, I think I'm getting ready to leave my, you know, leave my situation. Mm. And I was like, leave your situation? For what? You know, he been married, you know, long time. And why? He's like, man, I just feel like I just want to be single. And you know, and don't get me wrong. I'm sure wives feel that way. Mm. I felt that way. You know, men feel that way. It's a feeling. It happens. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You'll get it sometime. So sometimes, especially if you hanging around some singles and you like, boy, they living. You know, y'all just kicking it, doing whatever you want to do. And he's like, ooh, boy, I want, that's what I want. That's what I want. And so I just told him, I said, man, you sound real stupid right now because after you get back out there, and then, mind you, it's a new world. Mm. When we was coming up, girls used to like us for us, period. <laughs> you know, now they like you for what you can do for them. You know, it's, it's what I see a lot of, just – Cash at me, zell me. Like, I, <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, I'll be listening to my to my single partner in the barbershop talk. They like, yeah, man, girl just told me to cash app up fifty dollars, get a, get her nails done. So I'm like, I, I just met her. You know what I mean? And so mm. I'm like, ooh, times change. But you know, I told him, I said, man, you go back out there. I bet you won't be out there two good months before you realize you have made an epic mistake. Epic mistake. Then you go, well, man, man, my wife, man, she get on my nerve. Who wife don't? Who wife don't? It, it, it happens, man. You know, I said this too. Y'all, only in relationships do we not respect seasons. Okay? When you're in a season of trying to get money, and you're not getting it right now. You never say, I'm finna divorce or quit trying to get money. <laughs> you just in a season where you trying to get it. If you trying to get a job, you look, you trying to get jobs, ain't nobody hiring, you can't find your niche. Not one time do you say, I'm about to divorce trying to find my niche, I'm about to quit trying to get a job. You just in a season right now where you ain't have. But only in a relationship. When things are not going well, we don't look at it as, as just a season. We look at it as, oh, this is the end. Peace. Mm. I want to be single again. I'm out. When it's just a season, dog, it's, it's just, it, it'll pass. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, Samantha Lee actually came on here um, a few it was probably last week, week and a half ago, and she communicated that. It's Ty Tyrese Gibson's ex-wife. Tyrese Gibson's okay, ex-wife. Okay, I'm about to say who? Yeah, yeah he was looking like. <laughs> Tyrese Gibson, ex-wife. I don't okay. know if y'all seen that. We did a live show with her a few weeks ago. What'd she say? And she communicated that one of the main reasons she actually filed for divorce is because of the things she had, the people she had around her. Mm. And what was in her ear. Gotcha. At the time. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's interesting because I think just as important for you I think it's probably, would you also agree it's just as important that your wife mm -hmm. also is surrounded by that same tribe of most, women? Most definitely. So who your wife around? I don't even know. Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> really, no. Who, who is you around? Uh, now, you know, she has some good friends. You know, one thing we share, you know, my, my friends, I have the same best friends since the sixth grade. And so does she. You know, and that's rare in today's age for Definitely. you to kind of still be with, you know, people that you grew up with. Very rare. Um, and then, of course, you know, we're active um, in church. She's act more active than me because I travel a lot. But, you know, my wife is over the choir and such at the church. And so, you know, she just, you know, she around, you know, good people. Um, she works at a school and um, the principal at that school is a, a member of other church 
singing the choir that my wife is over and all this type of stuff. And so, you know, man, we're around good people, good couples. You know, my son play AAU ball, so different couples that, you know, just kind of hang with. And you don't, and watch this, and when I say hang with, not all the time. You know, I think that's what people kind of make a mistake too. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like, I don't, who was that? Was that Drake that said no, no new friends? Yeah, mm-hmm. was that? I yeah. mean, I, yeah, no, I'm a little older, so I don't know. But yeah, you know, because what I got from that, it's like, just because you hang with people, we went to Vegas and saw Usher together this weekend. This does not make us besties all of a sudden. That was that weekend. We enjoyed each other. It was cool. Maybe we'll do it again. Mm. You know what I mean? Stop forcing. Like forcing, you know, friendships and accountability partners and all this type of stuff. Man, just let them kind of come organically and, you know, and whatnot. Because, like I say, my best friends, they're married. I've been married 26. Maurice, he been married 24. Corey been married 23. Wow. We go on family and friend vacation. Those are our that's our community. Now we have others. Like I was telling you, <laughs> AAU, at people from the church, people from the choir, people at our school, some of my comedy partners, you know, woo woo. Mm-hmm. Go hang with their wives and you know them. But put it in perspective, dog. Cause yeah, you get too many, you get too many in the ears. And you know, like you say, Tyrese ex wife said, all these people in your ear, like, who who in, and why are they in your ear? Mm. You know, for somebody to be in your ear, you kind of have to be talking. That's a good point. Yeah, you got to like, be careful who you vent yeah, to. Yeah, you got to be careful who you vent to. Yeah. You know, so you talking, so now, oh, yeah, girl, well, that can't be me. Oh, play a shoe. Boy, you crazy, man. My wife would have did that. I would have. So you just telling me to pack up and leave? Leave my life? Just that easy, because those people are not attached to your life. Yeah. They only attach to you. So when you talk, that's what I'm saying. When I'm talking to my boys that, that my boys that we walking on the track with, I'm not, I'm not on his team. I'm on the team of right. I would never tell a man, leave your wife, leave your children. I don't care how bad it was. I'm not finna tell you to do that. That's your family. But you have people out here have no problem. Mm. No problem just telling people, man, go on, go. And you, yo, yo, I think I, I, think I can't I, even lie and say I haven't made that mistake too. I remember, man, a few years back, me and Ryan, man, we actually had somebody on our team mm-hmm. that was going through stuff in his marriage. Okay. And it was, it was interesting because he was a young guy. He was married, mm-hmm. and first of all, he was younger than us. Right, right. Married, didn't have kids. Okay, but he had a lot on his plate mm. because he was he was working for us. Yeah, you know, so we knew how much he was making. Sure, mm-hmm. still still building himself up as a young man. For sure. And he had he had some turbulence going on in his life. Yeah, heavy turbulence and, in yeah. my opinion. And, and, and to be honest, <laughs> yeah. it was a bit of a situation he had caused because he had. Went outside of the relationship, it caused some issues. Gotcha. And what ended up happening was, you know, obviously his wife responded with, you know, turbulence. Turbulence. Yeah, then, man. you know, lack of trust, all the things that come with when a man yeah. decides to step out. For sure. And it was affecting his work. Mm. It was affecting his mood. Mm. It was affecting everything around yeah. him. I know. And we <laughs> are single guys. Yeah. Right? Way before we got entrenched around yeah. speaking to fellas like you. Gotcha. Yeah. So we like. Hell no. Yeah. Like, what the hell are you going to do? <laughs> we like, bro, you too young for you that, bro. Yeah. Like, this, yeah. See, the thing about it is we had his best intentions. You mean mm-hmm. well. Like, we really wanted him to be the best version of himself. No, I. I, I and we thought we was giving him. Righteous, yes. yes. Advice, yeah, like yes. you, like you, lucky you got, yes. you got us. You, got- <laughs> <laughs> you lucky, cause ain't nobody gonna tell yeah, you. Like yeah. we about to tell you, <laughs> right. you need to go ahead like we and keep it, we kick keep it, it to the real. curb, right. Right. Above, like you, my brother. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing, and, I, and that's so dangerous because it's very, now, very, like, yeah, is not only was 
that relatively irresponsible for us to give him that information because now what I now knowing who I am now, mm -hmm. I would have say I know exactly who you need to speak to. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And I right. would I would have took right, right, a referral right. route. Right, because right. he's young. Okay. He, route. He's young, so he came venting. Got so you. he really venting to the wrong people. Right, and exactly. but that's because yeah. we was his community. Yeah, it was his community at that time. We was right. big bros. I got it. So at that point. Sometimes, and that's why you really got to understand who's in your community. And I really feel for the people who have like a lack of, com you know, mm -hmm. a community mm -hmm. because now you just subject to your council. Yes. And when your council is really unqualified, unqualified, and not unqualified in life, but no. that area, in this of life. area, this is what I'm talking about, just some in this area, issues. And like I said, Y'all meant well. I believe the people that are in those ears, they mean well. They think what they saying is probably the best because that's what I would do. I wouldn't be dealing with this. And, you know, all that might sound good. But, man, the man got a family. Mm -hmm. The goal is to keep your family together. Yeah. You said the man stepped out. So he got to take some accountability for what he did. And when you do that, women are going to be tripping. <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, and for a long time. And yeah, for a long time. Because one of my partners, man, but how long? Hey. That's what we were saying. That's what we were saying. Why is it? He was, was like, bro, how long is she going to put you through this, yeah, bro? Yeah, I know. That's what. That's what. And, and the thing about it, <laughs> let me tell you something. My frustration level with, with his situation was yeah. so high. <laughs> I'm just like, bro, it's been a year. I'm pissed off. I'm mad for him. You're mad for him. I'm like, bro, she doing you dirty. It's yeah. been a whole year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like you said, we thinking, you know, it's funny. We thinking that we just giving this man the absolute best advice, but have no idea yeah. of the, really the situation, the scope of the situation mm -hmm. as a married man who probably experienced something like that or came close yeah. to experiencing something like that would. And yeah. shout out to him for actually staying married. Yeah, it's good. Um, he's staying married and even just being around him now, you could yeah. just tell, you especially being through that season of his life, yeah. and being around him and his family, yeah. and you feel the tension mm -hmm. till now. Yeah, you feeling like a more, uh, 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 some more fluidity between how him mm -hmm. and his lady mm -hmm. kind of moving now. Mm -hmm. It's like you look kind of look up on our end. We'd be like, damn, they made it through that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give you two things. One of my guys messed up, you know, stepped out. And um, his same question was, because, you know, I had been talking to him, and he was like, man, how, how long she going to be tripping? He said, man, I'm just ready. I'm just ready to move forward. And I said, the guilty party is always ready <laughs> to move forward. <laughs> like, you're saying this as if, oh, you should be commended. Man, I'm just ready to forgive and move forward. But you ain't. I mean, but you, you're not the innocent party. Right. You the guilty party. Surely the guilty want to move forward. And then I remember another thing. This is why I try to stay out of people's, stay out of putting my opinion in other people's relationship. Years ago, long time ago, I mean, I probably just got married. Man, one of my boys, his girl, I'm at a club. I was at a club, church boy at the club. One of my boys... I saw his girl and they hugged up with a dude. Mm. Man, it turned my stomach. Because this boy here love this girl. And whenever you, whenever a guy, and I know women like, well, we do it all the time. But, you know, but whenever a guy is really into a, uh, uh, you know, a lady and, and we know and your boys know, oh, he down with her. Yeah. It hurts you to see her not be a good one. It right. Does. Because it's like. He's a good guy, right? right? And I'm in that club, and I looked over there, man, and she was all kind of like hugged up, booed up, man. I just, oh, this hurt me. Hurt me to the core the way I left. I left the club. I mean, I'm left. Oh, so she didn't see you? No, she didn't see me. Wow. I left. Talked to her days later. I said, look here, man, I saw you at that club. And uh, I'm just telling you, man, girls always, women always talk about ain't no good men. And all this type of stuff. You talking to her? I'm talking to her. And I said, and you got a good one. I'm sorry, man, man, this dude love you, dog. And 
man, you out here, man. You just out here like you ain't got a dude, man. I say, man, it messed me up. I say, look, if you don't want him, tell him. That's what I told him. I said, tell him. If you don't want him, tell him, man. Don't mess over a good dude. That's all y'all complain about. Mm -hmm. It ain't no good one. You got and you got one. Found you one. Somebody who love your dirty draw. Tell him, man. She was like, "You gonna tell him?" I said, "No, I can tell him." Yeah, and this is my boy. I could have, I could have went told him, but I'm, I'm trying to stay. That's not my place. I know we think it's our place because mm -hmm. we think we doing. Our friends a favor. So, uh, so you think you don't think you should have told them that? No, you saw I'm, that. I'm gonna tell you why. They still together. Been married now. Know how many years? So me going to tell them. I just think if I would have went told him, I don't know if they still together today. Wow. So that's why just because you know information, that don't mean it's for you to go tell them. So he, he he still don't know to this day. I didn't tell him. Wow. What? I don't know about that one. <laughs> Cause like, oh man. Nah, we talking painful. about this almost 30 years now. What you think? What? <sighs> and I ain't holding over her head like every time I see. I know. <laughs> right, right, right. I know what you right. did last summer. <laughs> like right. in the movie. No, I didn't do that because literally, that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. I man, people make mistakes. That's true. I mean, let's let's be clear. People mess up. She was out that night, whoop de whoop de whoop. I don't know. I'm not saying she went did something. I'm just saying how I looked when I saw her. You know how them clubs had them little couches and look. Nah, nah, you look. know, you know, you, we no, know. No, I'm just saying, but, was, you, but, yeah. but you know, I'm looking at it. It don't look good. Ugh, it don't look good. I, I agree with you that Ugh. if you would have told them now you, how you feel, and what you said is involved in his decision making. Exactly. So I do think the likelihood that he probably would have still been with the the young lady is unlikely. Maybe, maybe not. But I'm just. I <sighs> Tasha, <mean>. listen. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> Let me know. Yeah. I will accept whatever Ryan, come with you. Thank you. Want to know? You don't want to know. Nah, Tasha, I, you do not. I y'all. So, so watch, watch, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You watch think this. you want to know? I think you, it. You I think it just everything. depends on what phase I'm in. If I'm just single and dating, please tell me. Okay, well that's what. Well, yeah. First of all, because he was single and dating. No, oh my guy. Yeah. No, he all in. He's, well, he, he was he, married. He's no, no, no. I'm saying he's gonna marry her. Yeah, look, but at that, I'm talking about that point in time they weren't married. Oh no, 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 I'm still single. That's what I'm saying. So like, that's what I'm saying. Look, if you see my girl, as a matter of fact, any of the followers, y'all see my girl. <laughs> <laughs> you better make sure they don't see your girl. Right, man. Right, 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 right. Please, I'm, look, for God forbid. Man, all right? nah. tell me. But I, I do think it's a little different. Welcome to life. I could feel, I understand. I think if you're married and if you're single, it's a little bit different because it, now it's an Even if he was married, I wouldn't tell. It's not my business. It's not, it's not my business. And I don't want to have no influence on your decision. That's why I went to her. If you really love your partner and if you're a female and you really love your girl, go to the person who is the guilty party. Don't go to the innocent person and tell the person who have no idea about what's going on and you think they hurting them, you the one hurting them. Mm. Hold on, y'all. I want to get the people involved in this because if you are get on the, the side of telling, involved. I want you to put telling in the comments. Oh, that's, every, all the ladies. Oh, oh, that's, telling, oh, that's everybody telling. Not telling. If that's you're everybody. not telling, I want to see not telling. But why, why do you think that, though? Because, but, but don't you think it's some level of a responsibility you have as a friend to let your people know what's going on? No, my responsibility that I had was to go to that girl and let her know she got a real one who love her. And if she don't want him, tell him. You, t you heard him, not me. I ain't going to hurt my partner. You heard him. Mm. Not, why, why I'm hurting him? Mm. You, I ain't the one. I ain't doing nothing. And I and I we partners. I got to hurt my partner. You the one hurt him. You hurt him. Man, that's interesting. I'm gonna pull him to I say, man, I saw such and such. I looked like she was hugged. That up. who Ooh, knows? That could have harmed your friendship. I mean, exactly. he could have been thinking you lying or who. I, I mean, just, when it comes to when, love, when, matters yeah, of the heart. It's I ain't in it. Who no holds bar? Like you, it's unpredictable. You really don't know. 
No, I, I get it, man. That's a that's a very tricky situation. And then he loved her so much, she come back. Man, that was I was in there with my cousin. He was in. T- I mean, who, who, I know. You know I, 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 just, I get just, you. I get just you. Just anything. Oh yeah. Now, what did you did you see outside of that uh, particular situation at the club? Mm-hmm. Was there any other indicators that this woman may not have been treating him the right way or no. fully devoted to him? No. Okay. Not at all. Okay. And that's what I'm saying. Like, Sometimes people have a lack of judgment and they make some mistakes. I'm not saying it's okay. I'm not saying you got to be cool with it. I'm just saying that's what happens from time to time. That's what happens. And it ain't going to feel good. I'm not sitting up here trying to get over it. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, hey, people make mistakes. And maybe this has come because I'm older, you know. Understand, people make mistakes. You know, I'm curious about your perspective uh, as being married 26 years. For because mm-hmm. I was just uh, was yesterday my uh, at one of my boys' house mm-hmm. celebrating his 35th birthday. Nice. Him and his lady getting ready to have a baby. That was a big news. Mm-hmm. And it was a few guys that were there. They were all married between like the three year mark and like the five year mark. So okay. fairly, you know, new in marriage. Yeah, right? for sure. So of course, I'm just thinking about all these different things. I'm thinking about with the stuff they're dealing with. But I'm, I'm curious from your perspective, you marry one, two, three, four, five years, just in that early stages, is, should, how, socially, I'm, I wanna know how should things work. For example, mm-hmm. if you a married man, you've been married a couple of years, should you be going out to the club mm. with your boys? Is, mm. like the, it's like, is, is there some scenes that you just should not be a part of as a married man? or as a married woman, mm. the club being one of the prime examples? Yeah. So I can only do it like this. If I was on a diet and my boys say, let's go to the pizza buffet. <laughs> CC's. <laughs> well, <Whatever. laughs> I'm on a diet. All, all, all I can eat, you know, is... Um, you know, salad and grilled and whatever. And he said, hey, man, let's go to the pizza buffet. I think I'm going to say, you know what? Man, I'm on a diet. Can we probably go somewhere else where it's more my selection, yeah. what, I can, what I can do? So I think that applies to... Mm-hmm to marriage uh, when you married and you know your boys, man, let's go to this club. Now, I don't know why y'all went to the club or why y'all go, but when I was single, (laughs) what I was going to the club for wasn't a dance, it wasn't a drink. I'm going at a socialize with the ladies. You feel me? That's why, that's why I'm going. I ain't finna be out there stanking leg and percolating all that whatever. <laughs> I'm going, hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? You know? Yeah. And so when you married, you are literally on a diet for life. Damn. That's a <laughs> hell of a way to put it. It's a hell of a way to put it. It's a life's diet. That's, a, that's a good one. It's, it's a life's diet. And so this don't, and I, let me say this. I act like I ain't never been to a club married because I have. You know, when guys have a party or something, you know, it's not a, it's not nothing uh, regular, though. It's like, man, such and such, they meeting at such and such tonight. All the fellas from a basketball team, and went to, you know, so you're going to go by. Hey, well, well, but, it's real quick. But it's real, it's real quick, quick, though. <laughs> it ain't no you. It ain't no you just sitting there because after a while, you you know, they they, they stand and, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Yeah. And it's gonna be one for hit you. Hey Marcus, where you been? Ah, yeah. what up, girl? Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. So you trying to you trying <laughs> to avoid messing up your diet. It's funny you say that because when Pastor Jamal said you shouldn't, you know, marriage shouldn't be your first time at crack at monogamy. That's that's pretty much what he was talking about. Mm. Uh, I want to ask you this too. It was were mine, you though. were Go you ahead. already? Putting yourself, were you already have you already been successful at monogamy before your marriage, or uh, was 
was your marriage your first time trying to Man, trying this thing out? Yes, my wife was is literally my first real girlfriend. Mm. Wow, said, I had a girlfriend in the six. I mean, in the, in the my last real girlfriend. I said this is my girlfriend was ninth grade. Ninth grade. Tanya White, hey girl. Ninth grade, we was together about six months. And then uh, in college, I dated this one young lady real strong, real strong. But even she knew, although it was like we was, the, we was together strong, but she knew I was, you know, it was college. Degree was primary, everything else was secondary. So when I met my wife, I met my wife, and we got married in eight months. Got married in eight months. Met her December 12, 96. Engaged in late April 11th, 97. Married August 23rd, 97. Mm. Eight months. Knew this her. And now I'm finna try to be monogamous. On a dime. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? And so... You know, I mean, I don't really, it's no, whether you had cracks at being monogamous or not, <laughs> they're everywhere. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. They're everywhere. I remember this pastor, this pastor gave the best illustration that I, I mean, not the best, but one of the best illustrations about monogamy. He was saying, and please don't email them. This was a pastor said this, this was a, uh, <laughs> I don't want because women. He comparing us to fruit. Okay, I'm just. He just used this. It was at a men's conference. There was no women there, <laughs> so I know women now are listening. We're not. I'm not saying you are fruit, but this is, was just an illustration. So anyway, he said, "What is likened to is the fruit bowl syndrome, and all our lives you've been eating kiwi. You've been eating plums and peaches and grapes and oranges." And then one day you fall in love and now you got the apple. She's the apple of your eye. And now you got to eat this apple every day. This apple. The problem now is you still see the other fruit that you used to eat. And oof, look at that peach. God damn. I remember how that tastes. Didn't know. This is how he was kind of explaining it. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that kiwi. Ooh, I remember them kiwi. Boy, them kiwi. <laughs> God, no. Kiwis be busting. <laughs> yeah, you know, so he was just, he said, but you got this apple. This is your apple, and this is what you pull eat every day. And so his point was, what you got to do with that apple is, now you got to make apple cider, apple pie, apple juice. I mean, you know, you got to keep you got to keep flipping it because this, you know what I'm saying? That makes now, sense. Now, it was a men's conference. So again, women, please don't send them no letters. Don't hit me. Just tell me how it went. You got to create your variety. But you got to create your variety. Mm. You see what I'm saying? When you was a garden variety lover, when you, when you, when you had variety. Cause you're gonna be sick of that regular apple. Well, <laughs> he didn't say that. Yeah. He did not say that. No, you got to though. And, and baby, I ain't sick of my apple now. <laughs> but uh, but but it's just you know it's a bit much. You know what I'm saying. So just basically what you were saying, what uh, what Pastor was saying about mm. not being the first crack at monogamy. It was, I'm just saying this, regardless whether you did it or not. It's a lot of fruit out here. It's tough. Ooh, a lot of fruit. That honestly is a phenomenal analogy mm -hmm. as to it. And I think that's why they also say that brothers who had a taste of the entire spectrum of fruit mm -hmm. probably struggle the most with the diet. You mm, know? Yeah, sometimes. I think some of them then. Some of them, you know, you get tired. Man, do you know, I literally, I was in college. And I just, you know, and I, and I had, if I could clone my college and sell it to a a young man, uh, <laughs> he would love it. But uh, just the whole college experience was great for me. And um, but uh, but my point, I miss my point. Trying to trip, trying to play too much. But <laughs> but but my thing with that is trying out a, ple a plethora of fruit. Yeah, it's it's like no, I don't know what I was gonna say. God, doubt. <laughs> 
Lost my train. I'm 51. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, 51. well, well, well it really, even how we got there was I was pretty much stating that uh, brothers who've tried a lot of fruit struggle mm -hmm. with now going back to one fruit, which is very difficult. Yes. My point was, so in college, I woke up and I said, I want something real. Mm. I just woke up one day, man. In college? Someone was laying next to me. And I look, I don't probably even know her name. That's that's wow. how I mean, you know, yeah. it's college. I'm, that sounds like college. It was just being 100. I, I mean, I know her first name, I'm saying, but I probably, mean, you know, I'm just, you know, and, and no shade on her. You know, we kicking it. It was just what it was. But I just, my two best friends, they had girlfriends that they had been with, that they in love with, that they loved. And I was like, I want that. Mm. And I just woke up one day and I was like, man, I'm, I, I, that's, that's what I'm ready for. Now, that's step one. I'm ready for something new. I'm ready for something real. I'm ready for something serious. Step two, how now do I make the adjustments and handle that? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's not a that's not an overnight process. When you used to the when you used to everything, it's just not like okay. Go back to the word. Gotta be patient, man. Gotta be patient. You gotta. But people gotta be patient with 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 uh with each other, you know. Yeah. What was it in particular about that experience that kind of was that epiphany for you? Was like what what were you feeling at that moment? Just at that, I just man, when, like I said, I woke up and it was like it's another one. <laughs> that's a song. That's a song. That's a song. And another one. That's a, that's a song. But uh, yeah, no, I just woke up, man, and I just you know, it was time. Okay. I mean, you know, again, you just you want something. You want somebody that's man that's down with you, that love you. You know, that's gonna grow with you. All that type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted, and I knew that. I, I knew, and and I needed it. Man, I needed. My wife helped me become who I am today. Because when we got married, I realized, oh my God, I'm responsible now for somebody else other than myself. And when you raise right, you know you gotta take care of this person and this person is, you know, believing and depending that you're gonna, you know, you're gonna lead well and you know you're gonna you're gonna be this guy. You know, it's pressure being a real man. It's, you know, it's a little pressure, and 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 that's cool. A lot of pressure. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even tripping. Don't capitulate to it. Embrace it. It's, it's pressure, and so you know the fact that she was there, and like I say, man, my wife held me down. Held me down, man. It ain't nothing she wouldn't do, you know, for me. I t I, I joked on another podcast. If I got into a terrible wreck, God forbid. And my wife had to take care of me, bathe me, and do all this here. She would do it. Now she would have a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be clear. She's gonna have a she's gonna have a little man. But she gonna take care of me though. You understand know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Cause she down with me. And so I needed that. I needed somebody to believe somebody to believe in me. I already believed in me wholeheartedly. But to have somebody else believe in you. Oh man, you can't beat it. You can't beat it, cuz. Mm. She think I can do anything. We got some um coming up. We got a show with some some young ladies that are 50, 50 plus. Yeah, I don't know the exact okay. ages, but we, you know, the the goal is to gain some women up on mm. how to, you know, find them a good man. Nice. So that's coming up. Nice. Now you being fifty one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I am curious. I'm, I know you. You know you got the. I was about to say senior citizen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost there. Right, right. ARP sending me a lot right, of mail right, now. Right. A lot. But you got these young ladies that you, you that I'm sure you come in contact with, whether it's your your friends mm -hmm. or your friends, your wife's friends, mm -hmm. as in they you know late 40s, early 50s. What yeah. are, what is some game that you might have that maybe the average woman is not quite aware of? Just from things that you've seen, that's some game about how they can identify mm -hmm. uh, the right the right man to potentially mm -hmm. you know start from there where they at now to build mm -hmm. a life with or just some game about how to uh, conduct yourself or handle yourself yeah, if like you're that. longing yeah. for that relationship but haven't quite found it. 
Yeah, I think just some things I picked up from teaching at um, Texas Southern University and just in my travels is that, you know, a lot of times now, um, a lot of women that I'm seeing, whether it be in the airport or, you know, different places in the mall, um, the majority of them now do not have that mystique anymore. Everything is already, uh, it's no mystique about it. It's no mystery about them. And what I mean by that is whether it's the clothing, the dressing, hey, you see what I'm working with. Or even if it's um, how they think or, you know, because now we're in the information age. So social media, they, it's like I know you or I feel like I already know you just based off of your postings and appearances mm -hmm. and everything. So a lot of them, they lose a mystique. The mystique helped me like, oh, I want to get to know this person. But when, but when you're already out there, when you're already billboard material, well, now I don't know if I want to get to know you. Now I might want to, I might want to knock you down. I'm just, if I can accept uh, it. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, I ain't talking yeah. about me. I'm just talking about as a man. I yeah. mean, the man might want to, you know, take you down and, you know, do whatever. But I don't know if they want to get to know you anymore because I think there's a lack of mystery and mm. mystique. So I would say that. I would say, you know, you know, tone down. Keep some mystery about yourself. You know, let a dude be like, oh, I didn't know that. Mm. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a good game. I ain't know that. Oh, I, oh, I, you know what? I ain't even know she was. I ain't even know she was a lawyer. Oh, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know this and that. Mm. You know, just kind of. You know, but now you know everything is. You know, like I say, is is, and I'm not faulting them. I'm just because that's the way the world is. Everything is branded now. Yeah, I, mm. I gotta let you know. Feel like you gotta let you know everything in this information age. You know, gotta let you know. So, but. You know, yeah, because I can know, man, I go on that Instagram, and man, everybody naked. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody naked. Everybody. Yeah. And I just be like, wow, boy, oof, this was I when I was, you know, back in the day, like in the in the 90s, if this, if we had this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we had, we had, T, when we had TK on here last time, he was like, mm -hmm. lingerie used to be special. He oh. said, now nah, women wearing it outside with Air Force One. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that boy's stupid. That boy's stupid. Yeah. It's yeah. different. It's different. True that. True yeah. That. True that. It was a lady in the, uh, in the airport. I was there. And so in the airport, she got on some little, like, terry cloth shorts, like, with the cheeks hanging out. Terry oh, cloth. my gosh. Watch this here. With the little tube. I don't know what they call this, but it's just this Ooh, part. That's yeah. that, that, that left eye. That, yeah, that I know you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 With that, right? Some flip flops. Watch this here. Now she got a blanket. Okay. So I was like, why you got the blanket? I mean, if you cold, why do you put on some clothes? clothes? <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, I just want to show you, why you put on some clothes? That's so ratchet. Yeah, no, no, that's she, right, no. Now watch this. She bad, banging, boom, boom, got, got it together. So I'm sitting there, you know, sitting there, chilling. I'm on my phone. Every time she, she got up, several times. Every time she got up, I'm. She get back up. Huh? <laughs> I'm mean, every time, I'm huh? right, right. So finally, she sat down. She was like, "Do you like what you're looking at?" I said, "I do." I did. I said, "I do." Wow. She said, "So what's up?" I said, "Nothing." She put up like, like, like corny dude. Almost like I'm a corny dude. So, <laughs> and it was and it was crazy because some believe. You can't like what you see, and I want nothing. Yep. I don't want nothing. But listen, sister, if you're showing it to me, God knows he gave me some good vision. That's a fact. I'm looking. Yeah. It's Because to me, it's no different. And again, I'm not comparing ladies <laughs> to a vehicle or anything. I'm just paralleling this. If I see a a, a truck I like, if I see a, uh, what's that Mercedes I, I like? G-Wag. That G-Wag. I'm going to look at it. I don't want it. I like it though. I'm gonna look at that thing. Ooh, that one clean right there. You don't think if a woman half naked, no mystery, no mystique, you don't think I'm gonna look at it? 
It, yeah. it looked like she's selling something, so you might be window shopping that day. Right. <laughs> I'm just looking. I'm just looking. You're I just, just look. Hey, oh, well, that's how she wanted to do it. Boom. <laughs> but yeah, they never say. So what's up? I'm like nothing. That was crazy. Absolutely nothing. Let, let, let me ask you this here, because I, I, I want to close out on this one. Get, get the people something real to walk away with. So Let's what's up? Because <laughs> twenty. <laughs> it's crazy. Twenty six years of marriage. Yes. What's the biggest difference? between your marriage then mm -hmm. and, and now? You can take your time on that one. The biggest difference from when we first got married to now? Yes, sir. Oh, man. Oh, that's a show in itself. Um, the biggest difference, if I had to go with something on the biggest difference of that, I would say is the vision is clearer. The vision is clearer, you know? We have two kids, and we know we gotta. Um, we have to make a life uh, that's safe for them, make a life that's um, conducive for them as relates to where they can thrive, where they can be great, put them in good positions, you know, to succeed in life. Uh, we want to be able to leave money, leave inher an inheritance, you know, for our children. And so I think vision, just we see clearer now. You know, in the early days, you, you know, you just kind of trying to trying to make it. You know, trying to stay together. It's a faith walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn, you just, you just, you know, black love day to day, and today a good day. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Tomorrow <laughs> may not be. And so, you know, but I think now the vision is clear. So even when we argue, even when we're not on the same page. We can look at the vision and know we got to get back on the same page. We got to get back on one accord because mm. it's work to do. So I would go with vision. It's clear. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That makes it easier to know exactly what you're fighting for. It makes it easier. It makes yeah. it easier. So even when I hear a guy, if it wasn't for the kids, I'd be gone. Well, that's a good reason to stay. Mm. <laughs> Just stop making that, stop making that something bad. You know, that you, I mean, if I, we didn't have kids, I'd be gone. Well, the kids is a is a darn good reason for y'all to still be together. Mm. Yeah. I never well, thought about it from that perspective. No, yeah. that's that's beautiful, man. And Marcus, I, pre I appreciate you for coming up here and dropping game. Man, thank y'all for inviting me. Yeah, of course. I appreciate it. Of course, 100%, man. You always invited anytime you come back to Atlanta. Appreciate you know, we got that Monday and Wednesday night live show. Yeah, I got to come do that live. Yeah, yes. Be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we would, I would, I would definitely really love that. We would have a good time with you. <laughs> <laughs> on that joint, the audience are getting engaged with you, asking some questions. Right. That'd be a good time. That'd be a good time. And right now, you you currently on tour as well, right? I'm on tour right now. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, what, what's the next to city the coming up? the end of the year. Yeah, to, to December 31st. What's some cities coming up so the people can know? Uh, I'm in Stockbridge, Georgia, November 4th. I believe it's Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm in Goldsboro, North Carolina on the 5th. And I'm in Durham, North Carolina on the 6th. Yeah, so this weekend, that's the dates for this weekend. Let's get it popping. Yes, Marriage is, is major, major surgery. surgery. Woo! Yes, they need that. Hey, yeah. listen, this man is living it. This man is walking it. And he is talking it. And you talked it here today. Appreciate it. Now, listen, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. And I appreciate everybody for watching it. If you watching it, made it this far, and you got blessed, drop a bless right now in the comments for us go ahead and drop that word in the comments and while you're down there go ahead and hit the thumbs up because you know that's how youtube is gonna go ahead and push this out to the masses so please like and put that comment down there for us and we appreciate you you guys know monday and wednesday night every night at 8 p.m we going live so thank you for joining this one here but make sure y'all join us so you could be up in the chat and with the family the initiates how we do it hmm. but as you guys know Hardly initiated. We are out.